Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. So good to have you joining us today as we worship the Lord and exalt His great name. Heidi, Terry, Tim, start us off by singing My Savior first of all. Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions. We search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one, who are the 11? In Mark chapter 16, verse 14, for Jesus had 12 disciples. Indeed, Mark, Luke, and John, those three gospel accounts, do not tell us what took place with Judas after he betrayed Jesus and handed him over to the Roman authorities. The, the story is simply not told. We lean, however, on Matthew and also on Luke as he begins the book of Acts for the detail. In Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 to 10, it says, Then when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, Jesus had been condemned, he felt remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, and he tried to undo what he had done, but he went out and hanged himself, and 
uh, thereby ending his life. And Luke repeats a part of this in Acts chapter 1. And it, the real focus there is the appointing of a uh, successor to Judas in order that the 12 once again be, in fact, 12 witnesses, that is a complete, the number 12 is the number of completion. It was important that there be a complete body of men to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Matthias was selected in order to stand with the other 11. Question number two, did Jesus come from Moses' line or Isaac's line? At the outset of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 1, we have a genealogy in the first 16 verses. It is a detail of the background of Jesus going all the way back to his great ancestor Abraham. There we find in that genealogy the name Isaac, but we do not find the name Moses. Once again, we go to Luke chapter 3 and verses 23 to 28, one of these being the genealogy tracing Jesus' line through his father, that is, as it were, his earthly father, Jacob, though that was not, or rather Joseph, that was not exactly correct, but that was the assumed. And the other through Mary's line. Moses simply does not appear. Yes, indeed, Jesus was of the line of Isaac. He was in the line of promise. He was in the line of promise. He was not in the line of law, although he kept the law in every detail, in, in all of its minutia. But Jesus, even as Isaac, 2,000 some years before, Jesus was of the promise, and so he was of that line. Question number three, do you think God will permit mansion renovations in heaven? Interesting question. I know that we are renovation crazy these days and uh, gigantic renovation stores and shows that talk about renovations, they pop up all over the place. Here is what I think is the right and proper response to that. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 says, Things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Here's the nub. Here, here's the core of what I'm endeavoring to say to you. If you think that you can improve on what God has in blessing for you, I think you are sadly mistaken. I think that when you get to glory and you see what God has prepared for you, you'll say, I never could have even imagined or dreamed of such a wonderful place. I can't fathom any improvement to it. And that is what it will be through all eternity. Once again, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, which, your imagine, which goes beyond your imagination or design abilities. You might be gifted in terms of interior design of one kind or another but that which God has been preparing for you, you will marvel at, be well assured. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Jonathan Cavist comes now to sing in the sweet by and by.
shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessing that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet Faith to Live By Resources continues to send out each week dozens and dozens of books and hundreds of CDs that they might be a blessing all across Canada and I know well beyond. We have been talking about this brand new CD, Just a Closer Walk, 14 songs our musicians put together earlier this year, and this is also being very eagerly received and gladly responded to. Solos, duets, trios, the male quartet, and the full group singing two songs. I know it will be a blessing to you, and you can listen to it at any time you wish. Ask for your free copy, sent postage paid without any obligation. Send your request to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Or you may call us toll free, 1 833 367 3852. Also, our website, which is Faith to live by.ca has a means of you contacting us and making your request known for this brand new CD, Just a Closer Walk. From this brand new CD, Heidi Taves comes to sing Jesus Rock of Ages.
I suspect that each of us have experienced this to some degree or other, a time in our lives in which we have gotten serious about how we are living our days. Perhaps the resolution, perhaps the commitment has come at a point when you attend the memorial or the funeral of a family member or friend, and you say, I am going to live for God. I am going to take my walk with Christ seriously. Perhaps it is at a time when health, either yours or someone near to you, is severely challenged and there's many visits to the hospital and to the medical team in order to seek their help. And there is much prayer that is ascending in order that health be restored. Perhaps it is at a time of accident and there is suddenly forced upon you the reality of how tenuous life can be. As we have been examining and continue to examine Paul's letter to the believers in Ephesus, we consider once again, Paul was not a free man. He was not one who could go where he wanted to go when he wanted to go there. He was a prisoner. He was a confined man. And such realities, similar to a point of passing in death, similar to hospitalization and health challenges, similar to an accident scene, it sobers one. It should. It sobers one to consider what is really important. What should we be focusing our time and our attention and our energy upon? What frivolous matters of life could be set aside and in fact nothing be lost? Paul is, has given us the doctrine of the body of Jesus Christ, the church of the living God, and out of that, in the latter portion, the latter half of Ephesians, he now presses upon us most passionately and most aggressively how that we are to walk in Christ, how that we are to set aside the deeds of darkness, how that we are to have nothing to do with that, and coarse, foolish talk is to have no place in the mouth in the conversation of a believer and a follower in Jesus Christ. We come to Ephesians chapter 5, and I begin with verse 15. Paul says, Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. How could it otherwise be? Jesus said that a greater than Solomon is among you while he was ministering to the people. 
Solomon is remembered as the great wise man of the Old Testament. Now, there were certainly others, but Solomon's wisdom surpassed that of all of his kin, of all of the others in his time. However, Jesus, God's very own son, he comes and he surpasses the wisdom of Solomon. Now, we follow after Christ, and in fact, we have Christ dwelling within our hearts. How can we walk as those who are foolish when we have him who is all wisdom dwelling within? Does that mean that a believer is un or incapable of doing something foolish? By no means. We are still human. But to have Christ dwelling within, there is a horrible contradiction when we are abiding in foolishness. And Paul, he pleads, he says, be careful how you walk. Pay attention. Watch where you're putting your foot down. Watch the direction where you are going. Are you veering off course a little bit at a time or a lot? Pay attention, please. And he says, we are to make the most of the time because the days are evil. We suspect that our days are evil. It's interesting to read here that Paul, he puts this in the present tense in his time 2,000 years ago. The days are evil at all times. It's not simply in our time, although I believe that we are surpassing, surpassingly evil. Paul says the days are in fact evil and we need to be careful that we make the most of every opportunity and make most of the time that we have. He goes on to say, so then do not be foolish. Understand what the will of the Lord is. How do we understand what the will of the Lord is except that we walk with Christ and that we listen to the Spirit's tender voice, that we find ourselves in the book, that we find ourselves listening to our Lord and Master and that our hearts remain tender to receive of what he has to say. Paul, he gives us good counsel as to exactly how we listen to the Lord and how we stay in step with the Spirit. He says, do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Oh, good counsel. Good counsel, Paul. Leave that wine aside which dulls the senses and which can so easily lead you off the path. It is a poison and it will indeed harm the child of God, but be filled with the Spirit. And Paul, when he says filled with the Spirit, he doesn't mean 50% or 75%. He's meaning chock full of the Spirit of the living God speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. It's a wonderful thing when you hear a believer humming a tune or when you hear them outright singing songs which they have heard in church somewhere. There is a joyful spirit. There is a lift to their spirit that lifts others round about them. And Paul is saying, that's good. Paul, when he, with Silas, was in the jail at Philippi, they were singing and praising God, even though they had just been beaten. And I'm sure their backs were bloodied, there were scars, and to sing and to expand their chest to take a deep breath meant that those wounds would open once again, but they couldn't help themselves. They were over, overflowing with the joy of the Lord, even in that time and in that condition. Paul says, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Thank you, Paul. 
he directs us to a thankful spirit, which is consistent with who we ought to be, for we have received so much. Let me bring you back once again to what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, you were dead in your trespasses and sins, but Christ has made you alive. How can we not but be thankful? even though this world may treat us badly, even though things may not go as we would wish them to, yet we can have a song in our heart as we follow after Christ, knowing that we are on the winning side and that He is more than victorious and that He is leading us on to glory. Oh, lift up your head and rejoice in whom we follow and that He is a great Savior and that He is leading us home, safely home. Rejoice in Him and let your, let your heart sing and let your voice, let your mouth also declare the praises of God. Pastor Barbara today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barbara would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 